One of the deadliest and most horrific concentration camps of the Second World War was Dachau, which was also the first concentration camp built and opened by the Nazis. It opened following Hitler's rise to the position of Chancellor, and it was intended to imprison many opponents of the Nazis, and the authorities would arrest communists and other political enemies to begin with. But as the camp grew into a huge complex of around 100 subcamps, Dachau became known for being a site of immense torture, execution and slaughter. There were around 32,000 documented deaths within the barbed wire, but there were many more who succumbed to the conditions, and the brutality of the guards and their demises were not recorded. But when the Americans liberated the camp, on the 29th of April 1945, they came across around 10,000 sick prisoners, and the liberators worked day and night to try and make the conditions better, and to deal with diseases that were spreading. But there were many prisoners who had been executed over the years of Dachau's operation, and during war crimes trials, the true horrors of the executions of the prisoners came out. Join us today as we look at this, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The horrors of Dachau concentration camp were perpetuated by the evil of the SS guards, and those men and women who worked there, and were executing and torturing every single day. When the camp opened, one SS man gave a harrowing speech that stated, Comrades of the SS, you all know what the Führer has called us to do. We have not come here for human encounters with those pigs in there. We do not consider them human beings, as we are, but as second-class people. For years they have been able to continue their criminal existence, but now we are in power. If those pigs had come to power, they would have cut off all our heads. Therefore we have no room for sentimentalism. If anyone here cannot bear the blood of comrades, he does not belong and had better leave. The more of these pig dogs we strike down, the fewer we need to feed. It's clear that the Nazis did not think these prisoners deserved to live, and that they intended to brutalise prisoners and slaughter them. The first killings and deaths inside of Dachau emerged as soon as the camp opened really, and as the Second World War erupted, many prisoners of war would be sent to the camp for their execution. Over 4,000 Soviet POWs were sent to Dachau, and they would then be shot on the firing range located nearby at Hebertshausen by the Commandant of Dachau's guard. These executions were a clear violation of the Geneva Convention for how prisoners of war should be treated, and the SS referred to these actions as special treatment. The first executions on the firing range occurred on the 25th of November 1941, following Operation Barbarossa. There were also gallows inside of the camp, where prisoners who broke the rules and laws of the camp would be condemned. Many of these were executed for their actions such as stealing scraps of food, which they were doing to simply survive, and the men and women of the site were forced to witness these executions to strike fear into their hearts. There were also many torture methods used such as standing cells, which were tiny prison cells in which an inmate was forced to stand in these without sitting down for days on end, and this was truly brutal. Also floggings in public and tree or pole hanging was used. But when the site was liberated, there were calls to bring those guards of Dachau to justice, and the Dachau war crimes trial was held by the Americans. The Americans following liberation did carry out a form of reprisal, as there were many former guards who were shot by an American gunner behind a machine gun during an incident, and there were other SS guards slaughtered around the camp by the prisoners in individual skirmishes and also with the liberators. But the Dachau trials were an opportunity for the prisoners to speak out about their treatment and their experiences, and many told of the executions of the prisoners and inmates at the hands of the SS. It was common that on-the-spot beatings by SS guards took place, but there were also many other methods used to execute and kill prisoners in the camp. One German prisoner, Otto Edward Gendrian, said of his experiences, I saw SS defendant Sylvester Philiburk with a machine pistol under his arm, also defendant Moll and crematorium head Bungarts with pistols. They fired at naked bodies, and after the shooting I discovered the victims were French officers, up to the rank of general. I saw bodies lying on the ground, and just at that time a new group of naked people arrived. They had to kneel down, hands tied behind their back, and the reports of the guns sounded, and these naked bodies collapsed. They were shot in the back of the neck. This was common inside the concentration camps, and when the crematoriums or gas chambers were not operational, 
Guards would execute prisoners by shooting them in the neck. There were even facilities established at camps such as Buchenwald, which were known as neck shooting facilities, which were fake medical examination rooms with a hatch in the room, where a prisoner would be shot by an SS guard. There was also the executions of 90 or more Russian officers carried out in this manner, near to the crematorium, and a doctor at the site said, We heard single shots fired. Afterwards I went inside and saw the bodies of the Russian officers, many of whom I knew personally. They had shots in the neck, and the guards had taken out the gold teeth from them. Other prisoners would describe how efficient the Nazis would be in Dachau, with their use of shooting prisoners, as Gabriel Brzezhovsky, a 27-year-old prisoner from Poland, stated that, I saw SS defendant Vincent Schertel shoot a man, one shot to his cheek. The second one was a headshot. The man got out of the line because he wanted to get a drink of water. The use of gunshot would, during the Second World War, be used to execute millions on the Eastern Front, with the Einsatzgruppen using this method to slaughter civilians following advances by the German army. There were many other execution methods used at the camp, and hanging was used to symbolise terror and fear, and to try and keep the inmates in line. At Dachau, bodies would be left hanging from the gallows for days, so thousands of prisoners would walk past this reminder each day. A German prisoner said of one execution by hanging that, I saw across the street, from the entrance of the hospital, a group of prisoners. I walked over and joined them to see what was going on. There at the gate, defendant Marl and Bongartz were standing. In the middle of this group was a young Russian, 18 or 20 years old. I saw Marl put the noose of the rope, which was tied to the gate, around the neck of the young Russian. Then the stool under his feet was kicked away. I saw how Marl was grabbing the Russian by the legs and pulling downwards like a professional hangman, and as such he was known in the camp. But other guards would inflict suffering and punishment, even when they were hanging and executing. One former SS guard and defender of the Dachau trials, Josef Yarolin, was accused of beating inmates whilst hanging, and it was said of his actions, Yarolin pushed hanging men, so they swung to and fro, then beat these prisoners with a bull whip that was twisted and dried hard on their faces and their backs, in front and on their shoulders. The prisoners were bleeding. They were Germans, foreigners, all nationalities. This happened throughout his tour of duty, from 1942 until 1943, when Yarolin was transferred from here. It wasn't just men who were subject to hangings, as women also suffered this fate. Inside of subcamps, hangmen would be sent from the main Dachau complex to carry out the executions. But also in Dachau, lethal injection was used on sick inmates who were considered a burden inside of the hospital. These executions were carried out by nurses and doctors, and it was said of these that, I saw there that SS defendant Anton Endre made an injection into the veins of a Polish clergyman. I saw him a short while later over in the morgue. He was dead. Another prisoner recalled this horror and said, There was an order for the hangings of two pregnant Russian women. A superior demanded that I should kill the women by injection instead. Though I did not know for sure whether he had the right to change the mode of death, I injected the two women out of humanity. The more so since I knew that it was the usual custom of civilised nations not to execute pregnant women before delivery. Doctors would also admit to this sort of behaviour inside of the camp, and one testified, I gave 1.5 grams of epinatrium, a narcotic, and 10 cubic centimetres of distilled water. It was an intravenous injection into the arm. The sleep, or the anaesthesia, comes in about 10 minutes. I returned to the crematorium after the air raid alarm that had been called in between. The women had shots through their heads. They were dead. The testimony of those prisoners inside of Dachau concentration camp was harrowing, and it told of the deliberate and intended executions of prisoners. Many of those who were condemned should have been given decent treatment as prisoners of war, and their slaughter was a war crime. But those who were executed would be then sent to the crematorium for disposal of their remains, and it showed the horrific nature of Dachau. This was a camp which was operational for 12 years, and it opened at the start of Hitler's regime, being imposed in Germany, and was shut at the end of the Second World War. But it became infamous as one of the most horrific concentration camps of World War II. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.